our uh, metal oxide and semiconductor are separate and uh, we have seen the importance of the vacuum energy level e not everything is measured with respect to e not level and for metal we use aluminum silic uh, silicon dioxide for oxide and here we are considering for semiconductor we have a p silicon substrate material and we have considered the case where the work function uh, difference in case of a metal is less than in case that of uh, a semiconductor p type silicon as you can see phi wm is not equal to phi wp which is the work function difference is the different for metal and for p silicon and uh, for metal we don't have conduction and the valence band we have just the fermi level efm and in an oxide we have a very large band gap separated by ec and ev and we have a very small electron affinity and over here in case of semiconductor we have conduction band valence band intrinsic Intrinsic Fermi level and actually quasi Fermi level EFP. So since it is a p-type material, your Fermi quasi Fermi level will be closer to your valence band, indicating it's a p-type material. Okay. So this is about uh, you know the isolated MOS cap. Now on the right hand side, what you see over here is my MOS capacitor energy band diagram when three of them are joined together. As you can see over here, there is some bending happening over here. Okay. So we will see in the next five minutes. why this band bending happens when we join the metal oxide and semiconductor together okay so let's see we have not even applied any voltages externally we have just just joined them together so what we will see is now shortly okay so the work function of metal as we can see is less than the work function of your semiconductor when all three materials are now concentrated on the right hand side diagram let me just little bit expand it okay yeah a little better so concentrate on this diagram so whenever metal whenever the three materials are joined together to form a mos capacitor this mos device comes into equilibrium so for mosfet to be in equilibrium the fermi levels that is efm and efp should be aligned okay should be on the same line that means there can be no current flow through this mos capacitor eventually even if we apply any external voltage there won't be ever any current flow inside this mos device because we have a oxalate uh, because we have a silicon dioxide that is a uh, insulator in between which will not allow any current to flow through the mosfet okay so uh, whenever we apply the fermi level whenever the fermi levels are aligned uh, what will happen efm and efp should be aligned for this mos cap to be in equilibrium right so over here if you see carefully whenever they were not isolated whenever they were isolated together efm and efp were uh, different levels particularly if you see efm was at a higher level as compared to efp correct so what we need to do is we need to either bring down efm or bring up efp okay so that is what will happen over here let me just reduce this a little yeah so uh, for energy levels to be aligned together that is a mos mos capacitor to be in equilibrium your efm will come down and your efp will go up okay so for this to happen uh, we have to uh, for this to happen we have to make sure that efm energy uh, comes down and efp comes up okay so it increase this should increase and this should decrease this means that Uh, some electrons are transferred from metal to semiconductor correct if the energy is decreased means what we are losing some electrons from the metal and where they are going they are going to the semiconductor maybe the gate and the body terminal are connected via wire maybe the transfer is happening via there remember no current is flowing still okay in other ways we can say some holes are taken out of the semiconductor okay so this only happens if there was a connection to the ground either in the gate or the semiconductor or together so it can it can hypothetically mean this situation okay so either the gate or the body or the semiconductor are connected to the ground okay even if we do that uh, this should happen okay so the efm should come down and efp should go up okay so in equilibrium the entire mos capacitor would be charge neutral okay charge neutral means there will be no flow of charges at all on the either side there will be no current so let's draw the energy band diagram with the fermi level aligned 
okay so let us start by doing that okay let me just adjust this so what we'll do is we'll start by, by drawing the fermi levels i mean uh, if you all want you all can draw this energy band diagram in your books you follow this procedure and draw step by step okay so first start by drawing the uh, we know that the mos capacitor will be in equilibrium so first start drawing uh, by drawing the uh, energy levels efm and efp perfectly aligned so first you draw this and then uh, what will happen is since we want efm to come down and efp to come up when they are aligned that means what let's say these two points are anchors i mean let me just expand this let's say these two points are anchors right if we fix one other one will move up okay so let's say uh, I, i want to fix this uh, level efm so this efp will go up okay that is what is shown over here okay so once they are aligned that means this level has gone up and this level has stayed there only okay so now that the fermi levels have aligned but what will happen the energy levels bend upwards in the oxide layer okay to match this fine so this is what will happen from this step it will go to this step okay so efm and efp to be aligned what will happen is this will tilt the energy bands in the oxide upwards as you can see very clearly okay now next is we have drawn these three levels uh, efm efp and we have drawn the conduction band and the valence band in the oxide layer next we focus on drawing the conduction band intrinsic fermi level valence band and e not levels in the semiconductor so we know that the electrical electric field relation uh, with respect to ec ev and ei inside a material is given by this formula e is equal to 1 upon q delta ec upon delta x that means what there will be a presence of uh, electric field in the oxide layer also which will be directed from left to right so there will be a presence of electric field so whenever there is a presence of electric field uh there will be a change in the energy band uh, there will be a bending of band slightly so this electric field this with the help of this electric field this bending happens in case of a metal but some amount of bending also happens in case of semiconductor okay uh because as we as we have seen earlier uh to, for the fermi level to be aligned some of the holes are taken out of the semiconductor that means we are losing holes from here that means this side is becoming less p type okay as compared to the bulk this is the bulk region and this is the near the surface fine so for this energy level to uh, you know we are this energy level to move up we have to lose some holes from here okay so that is what is really going on over here so let's start drawing it so we know that energy uh, electric field will be present only if there is some change in the band bending and here uh, the band bends in case of oxide so there is a presence of electric field similarly in case of uh, in case of conduction band valence band uh, intrinsic fermi level there will be same band bending happening so for the electric field in the semiconductor to be directed from left to right okay the slope of the band should be positive correct here it is here i will show it to you here it is so this is the same slope which indicates that there is a small electric field in this area area near the si sio2 interface okay and this band bending goes in tandem with the uh, in flow with the sio2 layer okay so this indicates that there is some electric field present inside the semiconductor where the electrons are moving away okay so that is what is happening over here okay now this explains this diagram that is the band bending and similarly the trend follows in e not so how to draw e not we know the distance q into phi wp so you leave the distance from here and you draw e not and the same trend will be followed over here correct and you know the distance from efm to e not in case of a metal so q into phi fm and you draw the remaining bending over here band bending over here like this so this trend will follow the trend in the oxide and this curve will be there with the uh, with the curve in case of your bend in case of your uh, in a semiconductor near near si si2 interface this is si sio2 interface silicon oxide interface so as you can see over here since we are losing some holes out as you can see very very clearly here the efp and ev right they are moving away e ev slightly moved away from efp indicating that this region over here 
is less p type compared to this region this is more p type away from the bulk so this reshuffling of the holes which is moving out uh, you know it indicates that this is lesser positive so we have two fermi potentials one is called as bulk fermi potential bulk means away from the interface okay this is the bulk region which is very large this have shown hypothetically very small but its reality it is very large okay so over here we have a surface fermi potential surface means over here this one let me expand it on the surface we have the fermi potential which is slightly different that is called as uh, surface fermi potential and we have a bulk fermi potential where uh, where the uh, bulk means the away from the interface okay and this is the surface near the of i mean if you have 1000 holes over here in the p cell right and if you are taking out the holes where will the holes go out from either here or this side this side right if if you if some quantity is trapped inside and if you want to take it out it will move away from here right so from this in near the surface it is getting this is a slightly p type material uh, a lesser p type material okay so this is the important concept of your energy uh, uh, band bending in case of your uh, mos capacitor so what will happen this is what will happen when you join the three materials that is metal oxide and semiconductor together we have a band bending that is upward band bending from metal to p silicon from left to right we can say we have a uh, band bending towards upwards okay so we'll pause for around 5 seconds you can note down this energy band diagram i hope that these points are clear so again i revise first we started with alignment of the fermi levels since this device is charge neutral okay and then we drew the energy band diagram ec and ev in case of an oxide and then we concentrated on their semiconductor part away from the surface that is in the bulk region the bands are particularly flat indicate there is no presence of electric field there is presence of electric field only where near the interface on the on the semiconductor side and this presence of electric field is indicated by the band bending so when wherever there is band bending there is some presence of electric field so what you can say over here there is a presence of electric field in the oxide and there is a presence of electric field near the oxide semiconductor interface okay so if you have any doubt you can raise your hands or else, or else i can move ahead okay so i have given over here the textbook definition of uh, textbook answer of why band bending happens in your mos capacitor so you all can read it out we have uh, particularly covered all the points over here main point i want to stress on in this is this let me just expand this a little more okay i was talking about bulk p silicon and near the surface see this is sio2 layer this this line over here is separating oxide and semiconductor so this line is called as si sio2 interface and this is the region away from the bulk near the interface so this region away from the bulk near the interface is called as surface okay so here the potential the fermi potential here is different and here it is different so as we have already seen the surface uh, of p silicon near the interface of si so becomes less positive compared to the bulk p silicon so this is the only point which i want to stress on rest all the points are being covered okay fine so i think we can move on to the next point now let's say i want to make this uh, a, a bands flat okay i want to externally apply potential and make the uh, bands this energy bands flat so what is that condition called as we will now see so this is now concentrate over here next we draw uh, you know next we consider the flat band condition so for a ideal mos cap at vg equal to 0 we have a flat band condition let us go to the ideal mos uh, mos capacitor so this is your ideal mos capacitor as you can see over here this is the ideal mos capacitor so we have a flat band condition already achieved over here what do you mean by uh, flat band condition the bands in the semiconductor are flat it indicates is the charge neutrality right 
so it indicates that there is no electric field present whatsoever anywhere just means that all the bands in the semiconductor are flat okay but this was the condition when pi f w and pi f p were same at the same level correct now let us see how to achieve the uh, flat band condition in case over here if we have this kind of energy band diagram how to achieve a flat band condition okay so again i repeat flat band condition means zero charge condition in semiconductor there is no charge transfer okay so let us see that so for this case where the band bending is there at vg equal to 0 the bands in the semiconductor are not flat okay even if we apply the gate voltage with respect to body as zero volts the band bending is not at all flat so question is to make the bands flat in the semiconductor flat how much potential we should apply externally to this device uh, to this mos capacitor that means how much voltage we have to apply to the gate and the body to make this band flat that is what uh, that is what we are going to see now so that applied potential is called as flat band voltage denoted by vfb so it is a very very important formula please note that down uh, note that uh, parameter down flat band voltage it is, is the potential to be applied to the uh, gate and the body to bring the energy bands to the flat band condition in the semiconductor okay to just to make this uh, to this uh, energy bands flat we have to apply external voltage and that voltage is called as the flat band voltage okay so in order to make this voltage is flat band what we will do is we'll see now i think uh, there is some slight mistake i'll just i'll just tell let you all know uh, this efm is by mistake i have drawn it copied it from the uh, you know earlier uh, diagram over here in this case in this case this is a flat band condition correct but this is the case where uh phi w the work function potential in the metal and the semiconductor are same but in this case down over here because the work function metal uh, of the metal and the semiconductor are different these two levels won't be same okay so let us uh, no problem let us proceed ahead with this so from the energy band diagram we can make the bands flat if we make somehow this phi fm and phi fw Uh, the difference between phi f w and uh, uh, no phi w uh, p and uh, phi w m phi w p minus phi w m is equal to uh, flat band voltage. So that much voltage, the difference between the two uh, work function potential will be equal to the flat band voltage. So what we are meaning to say is f v f b should be equal to phi w m minus phi w p. If we apply this much voltage. then only we can get a flat band uh, condition then only the uh, branch will become flat okay so externally we have to apply a negative voltage to the gate with respect to body the body will be positive of course this will be grounded so here phi fm minus phi fp will be negative okay so that means vg will be negative remember here the y axis are electronic energies so if we apply a negative potential your fermi levels will go up okay the electric energies will go up so that is what is happening over here we want to make this energy move up so that this uh, this bands will become flat okay so here it is now these are elect increasing electronic energies as you can see clearly so when we apply a volt a negative voltage across the gate with respect to body that is vfb then the automatically all the bands in the semiconductor goes flat only one mistake in this diagram is that your efm will be slightly upwards okay your efm will be slightly upwards that's the only condition so here it is let me just go back to the other pdf okay so to achieve a flat band condition in case of this diagram uh, in case of this energy band diagram we apply a negative potential to the metal gate why we apply a negative potential as you can see clearly over here there is a difference Uh, between the work function between a uh, semiconductor and the metal okay so this much difference is the flat band voltage so when an external voltage minus vfb is equal to minus uh, phi wp minus phi wm is applied to the mos capacitor then it achieves a flat band condition as it is shown over here okay i again i repeat there is one mistake in this diagram efm will be should be slightly upwards 
and that much difference between the phi wp and phi wm is the flat band applied voltage okay so this will make the uh, mos capacitor charge neutral again okay so under the flat band conditions all the energy bands are flat and we have repeated uh, we have repeated this term q into uh, vfb that is the flat band energy now because it is multiplied by q is equal to minus of q times of uh, phi wm minus phi wp okay so in the flat band condition the bands in the silicon and the oxide are flat as a consequence as a consequence of this there is no net charge in the semiconductor or the metal hence all the uh, hence the electric field is zero everywhere okay so very very important condition only one change here efm will be slightly upward as compared to that okay so now again uh, i think we have completed this uh, you know uh, this pdf that is 3b correct we have seen what is energy band energy uh, you know energy band diagram of a mos capacitor why the band bending happens and what is the condition for the flat band voltage we have seen three things okay so now we'll take a biological break of uh, maybe 10 seconds so you all can close your eyes relax a bit and we'll move on to the next topic let me see if anyone has a question so relax for 10 seconds if you have a question you all can raise your hand if not i can keep the next pdf ready okay let me take the four a part okay uh, i i i hope that you all are relaxed a bit for few seconds now let us begin with the next topic okay so now now we apply next topic is how does the mos capacitor behave under external bias so so far we have seen what will happen when the mos capacitor that is mos is bring brought together all the three materials have brought together we get a band bending naturally and we have to apply external flat band voltage in order to get a, a flat band condition in case of a mos capacitor now we'll concentrate on the fact ki what will happen to the mos capacitor under external bias okay so let us see uh, there are three operating modes over here accumulation mode then we have depletion mode and then we have inversion mode both are pre pretty simple no you know uh, no complexity over here but only thing is all the three modes we should be able to confidently draw the energy band diagram okay so let us concentrate on this diagram later on you all can note down this this is the ultimate explanation so for the next 5 to 7 minutes please concentrate and listen to this if you listen to the accumulation mode the remaining modes will be very very simple okay so entire concentration over here this is the this is the final diagram energy band diagram we'll come back to it okay so right now don't worry how we got it and all that right now just concentrate on the uh, diagram over here that is mos the mos capacitor wherein we applied a negative gate voltage a negative gate voltage means your uh, gate terminal is at a lower potential as compared to the, the body terminal the body terminal is at a higher potential okay so let us start so when we apply a negative gate potential over here there will be negative charges coming onto the gate because the negative gate potential so uh, uh, metal has only electrons so what will happen the electrons will be repelled away so these electrons over here let me just lightly maximize it so let us concentrate on this diagram now okay so only concentrate on this diagram so again listen to the wordings when we apply negative voltage to the gate terminal now when we apply a negative voltage to the gate terminal metal hai na metal has only electrons so all the electrons will be repelled away near the metal oxide interface okay but they cannot go through the oxide because oxide is an insulator 
it will not allow any charge carriers to flow through it so we can say that uh, negative charges get accumulated near on the metal oxide side so how much ever negative charges come onto the gate dot much ever positive charges should be coming into the semiconductor through the ground terminal correct fine there will be no current flowing but there will be charges which are there which are flowing through the wire also right but there will be no current flowing they will be stopping near the oxide layer so what will happen is similarly we can say that uh, we have applied a negative voltage over here correct and we have applied a positive voltage over here so when we apply a positive voltage to the body terminal what will happen these are made up of, i mean uh, p type silicon right it has majority holes so holes will also will be repaired so let's say they have we have 1000 holes over here okay so to do to do this 1000 holes we have applied a positive potential so they will try to go more holes will be try to accumulate near the surface still they cannot cross the interface right because it's a insulator so they get accumulated near this okay so as we go over here these on an oxide interface you know, area holes do you agree or this agree or no on this so there is accumulation of negative charge made up of electrons on the metal oxide side and there is accumulation of holes on the semiconductor and oxide side okay so as we get uh, you know uh, here, here you see clearly the, there are electrons over here and there are holes over here negative charge and positive charge they attract each other but they cannot cross it so more of more of them will get attracted accumulated over here okay so again i repeat negative voltage will push all the electrons near the metal oxide surface a positive voltage at the body will push uh, uh, you know uh, will uh, move the holes towards the uh, oxide layer and will accumulate near the uh, uh, oxide semiconductor interface okay so more negative charges means more majority carriers or excess holes gets piled up at the si sio2 interface okay so again since the no current flows fine the negative charge at the gate should be equal to the positive charge near the si sio2 interface in the semiconductor okay so even though we apply externally negative potential at the gate no carriers can cross the oxide layer therefore however how much ever ch uh, charge come at the gate equal to the uh, how much ever charge come at the gate that is negative charge come at the gate that much opposite charge will come at the semiconductor so that the total charge should be zero so that this charge neutral condition is followed in this condition also in this case also right so uh, let us see how do we draw the energy band diagram now i hope that this concept is clear of why the why the name accumulation and what really happens over here okay now concentrate on this so let's build up uh, you know for the accumulation condition now first thing first when we apply remember very very carefully okay when we apply a uh, negative voltage to the metal gate i repeat when we apply a uh, negative voltage to the metal gate the fermi level efm on the metal side will increase okay so let's see over here let's see this is the condition prior condition okay this is the uh, uh, you know condition let us say flat band condition also correct so here it is uh, efm and efp aligned now what we are doing is now we are applying uh at the metal side we are applying a negative potential so when we apply a negative potential the electronic energies will move up correct so this efm will move up that is what we hear your efm will move up okay equal to the amount of gate voltage so the uh, fermi level energy or it's also called as the average energy so this means that efm will go higher as compared to the semiconductor fermi level efp so uh yeah so that is what will happen over here let's say if these two are anchor points efm and efp earlier prior uh, prior to the voltage applied uh, the negative gate voltage applied it is this way okay after the negative gate voltage applied your efm will move upwards so this is anchor point so entire point will move upwards right and efp will remain there only so this happens because we apply a negative potential at the gate terminal so efm will move upwards for the metal gate so what will happen 
what will happen there will be a band bending at the oxide layer as you can see over here so q into v o x uh what is v o x v o x is the potential drop across the oxide layer definitely we are applying a negative gate potential so definitely there will be a voltage drop at the oxide layer so efm will move up efp will remain there only these are the anchor points and we draw the energy band diagram at the oxide layer like this okay now since efp is constant as your efp should be constant in the semiconductor how should the ef uh, sorry how should the ec ev and ei look okay so over here we have a band bending upwards from p silicon to metal okay now next we'll see over here what will happen next okay so now uh, let me go directly over here so what we will do is what we will do is since there is a pile up of majority carrier carriers near the si sio2 interface what can we say we can say that uh, near the si sio2 interface my region is more positive can i not can i say that this is p type silicon but since this is this is accumulation of holes over here majority carrier holes can i say this region over here this region over here near the si sio2 interface is more positive as compared to this region over here okay so exactly that is what is happening over here so what we will do is we will draw we will draw the energy bands in the deep bulk p silicon so p silicon substrate nothing will happen i mean if we are uh, if if there are 1000 1000 holes over here and we apply a positive potential more holes are pushed inside right excess holes are generated correct so more holes are pushed inside but more hole concentration remains the same but here we have excess holes correct so what will happen over here in the bulk p silicon this is the bulk p silicon the energy bands will remain flat okay but now what will happen to indicate that the region near the oxide and the semiconductor is more positive it is indicated by this ev should be more closer to efp right if e, if the fermi level is closer to your valence band it indicates a more p type so that is what is happening over here uh, the efp will be more closer to ev and hence we have the band bending like this okay and once you draw e, ev your ei and your e, ec will be parallel to your ev okay and hence we have this entire energy band diagram looking like this i hope that this point is clear okay so in this case your efp is closer to ev indicating that it is more p type at the surface than in the bulk so we call this accumulation because here the majority carriers are getting accumulated near the si sio2 interface so now let's see what is the amount of band bending so the amount of band bending over here that means the amount of band bending in the semiconductor is called as q into psi s okay and uh, here q into psi s is the band bending over here and uh, what is the uh, yeah so the amount of band bending in the oxide is q into vox okay so what we can say we can say that at the gate potential vg will be equal to q into vg this is but nothing but energy but uh, the gate potential vg will be equal to psi s which is the overall potential drop across the p silicon uh, p silicon semiconductor plus the oxide potential so vox plus psi s is equal to vg that is the ultimate uh, you know the the entire story of the accumulation region okay so what is this q psi s q psi s is the amount of band bending at the surface of the semiconductor measured with respect to bulk so earlier we have said that wherever there is a, a bending in the band there is a presence of electric field yes there is a presence of electric field from positive to negative charge from right to left over here the uh, electric field remains constant in the oxide whereas in case of uh, uh, you know in the in the semiconductor only near the semiconductor and the oxide uh, interface near that you have a small electric field which allows these bands to bend upwards okay so this is the whole story about the accumulation mode any doubts anyone i'll wait for 5 seconds and i'll check out if anyone has raised hands okay so we'll again take a quick biological break of 
you know around 30 seconds so close your eyes and relax for 30 seconds we will move on to the next part that is a depletion mode so look away from your computer screens don't constantly stare stare at it and relax your eyes till then i'll prepare the next part that is the depletion region okay fine i hope that you all are feeling more relaxed fine uh, instead of constantly staring at the computer screens okay now now what is the concept now the concept second is very simple this will be finished in 5 minutes here we have the mos capacitor under external bias that is depletion mode now what is depletion mode your gate voltage instead of negative we have applied a positive but a small positive value okay so what will happen is let me just maximize this part okay i think this much is enough let me just try maximizing it a little okay yeah this is fine okay so now what happens instead of a negative gate voltage we have applied a small positive gate voltage so let's see what will happen whenever we apply a small all positive gate at the metal and a negative voltage at the body terminal okay so that means your gate is positive as compared to uh, the body or the substrate terminal so when we apply a small positive potential to the gate we get some positive charges coming out on the uh, coming out onto the metal gate so also at the same time the majority carrier holes in the p silicon substrate but get repelled by the positive charges at the gate okay so here we have a positive charges at the gate so these positive charges will repel the positive uh, positively charged holes present in the semiconductor so basically what we mean is when we apply a negative potential at the body what will happen the holes will get attracted to the positive uh, to the negative terminal of the supply right so what will happen the holes if there are 1000 holes over here and if they are attracted towards the negative terminal of the supply what will happen the holes will leave from here right not from here the holes will leave from here so whenever the holes will leave the position they will leave behind negatively charged in mobile acceptor ions as you can see over here it's marked in orange color so uh, whenever the holes will leave their position from here okay since they are getting attracted towards the negative terminal supply so what will happen it will leave behind the uh, majority uh, sorry it will leave behind in mobile acceptor ions now in mobile means they cannot move but they are negatively charged so we have a negatively charged region over here near the si sio2 interface so we can say we have removed the majority carriers and when and this region we have already seen in the pn junction this region where where we have depletion of uh, you know we have uh, we have removed the mobile carriers and there we have left out with the in mobile acceptor ions this region is called as depletion region these are depleted of any mobile charge carriers okay these are fixed uh, in mobile ions acceptor ions okay so the mobile uh, sorry the the majority carrier holes in the p silicon will go away from the si sio2 interface because of the negative voltage applied at the body terminal okay so again i repeat whenever we apply a positive uh, gate voltage a small positive gate voltage with respect to body the majority mobile carriers holes are repelled away from the si sio2 interface leaving behind negatively charged in mobile ions near the si sio2 interface this creates a depletion region near the si sio2 interface so which you can observe it over here let me show you all okay here it is the creation of a depletion region and here the width of the depletion region let's say it is xd so xd is the depletion region width over here okay this is the oxide this is the semiconductor and near the silicon silicon dioxide interface we have this depletion region because majority carriers are been removed over here okay now let us see how this how do we get this energy band diagram and how does the band bending is like this over here okay 
so let us start and let us complete that within time allotted time okay so whenever we apply a positive potential to the metal we have applied remember positive potential to the metal so what will happen whenever we apply positive potential to the metal the fermi level efm will go down on the metal side okay so um, let's say in the prior to applying anything any voltage efm and eft are aligned together okay and as soon as we apply a positive potential at the metal side the metal energy uh, energy level will go down and, and this is how it will look like so the efm will move down let's say these are the anchor points okay and ef has gone down okay so if efm has moved down that the energy level at the metal has moved down because of the application of the uh, of the of the positive gate potential so what will happen at the oxide side the band will bend like this okay so the potential drop across the oxide is called as v ox okay so this drop this voltage over here is uh, v ox okay and now we know that the uh, as efp is constant in the semiconductor efp is constant in the semiconductor uh, we need to draw the energy band diagram of ev ei and ec on the semiconductor side so here we can say the energy uh, bands are bending downwards from p silicon from p silicon to metal okay it's it's bending downwards like this from p silicon to metal from metal to p silicon it's bending upwards so there are both the interpretations over here okay and now what we will see over here is we, we have already seen that at the bulk bulk means away from the interface so away from the interface the whole con concentration remains almost constant no presence of any electric field over here okay only thing is near the si si o2 interface the leaving behind a negatively charged in mobile ions okay so that means near the si si o2 interface the surface has become less p type we can say that less p type it is lesser positive as compared to the bulk so at the bulk we draw the flat lines now ec ev and ei very very simple your efp your ev will be closer to it now ei will be in the midway of ec and ev so it's very easy to draw the energy band diagram in the bulk p substrate next to indicate that there is a, a negatively charged uh, i mean uh, uh, there is a less p type near the si si o2 interface right so what will happen is it is indicated by this okay so if ev is away farther away than efp it indicates that is a less p type material okay and ei is closer to your ev uh, i mean ec is becoming closer to that that means it's looking like a negatively charged so here you can say that it this consists of a negatively charged uh, region over here which is filled with immobile ions okay other way of saying it is it is less p type so it is indicated by it can only happen if we move away okay that's why the bending happens downwards over here okay so this indicates once we draw the uh, you know from this from this diagram to this diagram indicating that the surface near the oxide and the semiconductor is uh, less p type uh, we can complete the remaining ei and ec diagrams because they are they will go in parallel with ev okay so that's how we complete this uh, energy band diagram in, in this case efp will be away i mean this is the energy band diagram which you are supposed to draw so in this case your efp will be away from ev hence it is less p type at the interface than than in the bulk so we call this depletion because here the majority carriers are repelled uh, uh, near the uh, uh, si si o2 interface so again here the amount of band bending will be q into psi s q into psi s is the amount of band bending in the semiconductor and again over here we can say that uh, q into v ox which is the oxide potential plus the uh, potential drop across the semiconductor is equal to the gate potential okay and q into psi x is the amount of band bending and what do we have over here we have two things over here we have the bulk fermi potential which is this q into phi f and we have a fermi potential which is q into psi s uh, phi phi s so uh, we can also say that this amount of band bending q into psi s will be equal to q 
into phi f minus q into phi s. This is the bulk Fermi potential and this is the surface Fermi potential. Okay, so this is all which I want to cover. Uh, I think I cannot cover more than this. It's already five o'clock, and already forty-five minutes are already over. And I would like to. to uh, obviously, there will be a presence of electric field over here also. So I did that from left to. There will be electric field in the oxide, and there will be a small electric field present in the semiconductor near the SIS interface. So. I would like to take any questions now. I'll also stop the recording. Any questions? Let me unmute.